Hi, everyone. I'm Ben Gonzalez, and this is TDI. Well, going off to college is certainly a major milestone for a lot of folks, and it's also likely uh, the first time that many young adults have lived alone away from home. So before you drop your kids off for college, we hope that you'll share some fire safety tips. And joining me today is Texas State Fire Marshal Orlando Hernandez to go over some of these tips. Hello, Orlando. Hi, Ben. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Well, uh, let's start uh, with the basics, fire. I mean, what are some of the most common causes you see for fires on and off campuses? Some of the most common causes is cooking. I mean, uh, folks will now, like you said, they're on their own and they're going to be cooking for the first, some may be cooking for the first time. So we have some inattentive cooking. So cooking is a large reason. We have uh, several fires in apartments and on campus and off campus. And there's also smoking. People will smoke, may not extinguish their cigarettes. Um, and then you also have candles. So we want to make sure that if you use a candle in your apartment that you make when you go to sleep or you leave the room or leave the apartment that you uh, extinguish the candle. Now candles. So that's one of the things probably we're not going to be allowed in, in the dorms. Yeah, definitely not, a, not officially. So, um, so what are some other things that you want college students to know uh, regarding fire safety? Well, one of the things I want to know is that when when you're in your whether it's in a in your classroom or you're in your dorm or you're in your apartment and you hear the fire alarm sound, you should leave immediately because every second counts and we want to make sure that you're safe. So don't just assume that it's a false alarm. Uh, take it as a serious alarm and you need to evacuate the facility just to make sure that you're safe because we want you to go home at the end of the day. Um, one of the things also is that we want to make sure that everyone understands and as you go in college, you, you're kind of responsible for yourself. And, and so your safety, I mean, you are the number one person to take care of yourself. You're not going to have anyone looking out for you, directing you. So make sure that you're attentive and you heed all warnings. Um, another thing is like working smoke alarms and smoke detectors. So uh, test them and you get to your part. If you have an apartment, you live off campus, you want to test your smoke detectors and make sure that they're functioning. Uh, and you may wanna consider changing, to put a new battery in. So as soon as you move in, you change the battery, that way you know you have a working smoke detector in your apartment. In the dorms, you may have, the dorm may be on a fire alarm system. Now those you won't test, but they are on the system itself. So the system will be functioning. So when that something happens, you will get notification that there's a problem and you need to evacuate. Yeah, that, that's also the uh, not ignoring alarms is very important. That's something we, we've we learned in, in lots of cases where people get used to alarm sounds and they just uh, don't take them seriously. But every time you hear an alarm, that's uh, your notification to move, right? Yes, it is. I mean, like, you are correct. A lot of folks will just, they get that uh, it's just the smoke detectors are malfunctioning or the, the alarm system, the system is not working properly. And then they'll hear the alarm and they won't evacuate. But then that one time you really do need the time to evacuate that extra time to get out safely, that's going to minimize the time you're able to escape the building. And so part of that is next step is to know where you are, your exits are. And if you're in a dorm and, and you're in a multi-story dorm, one of the things you can do, and, and it's also we, I always practice this when I go to hotels. I count the number of doors to the exit so that if the hallway is full of smoke, I know how many doors are to the exit door. So if I'm six doors away from the exit door, I can go on my knees and stay low where there's good oxygen, go down six doorways, and then I know that that's the stairwell is going to the exit door for the stairs is going to be there. So that's one of the things that's really helpful if you know where you're at and not just in your in your living area. But you also need to be aware of where your exits are in the classroom buildings that you attend. So because you may have an, a, an incident there that you have to evacuate. And it's great to know where you need to go because there's not someone's not going to be directing you. You need to be aware of your surroundings and your nearest exit. Exactly. Well, um, going back to the students and their dorm rooms or apartments, they're going to a lot of times they're going to want to make it feel like home, but what are some of the things that they really need to avoid? 
So one of the uh, things that they'll want to now they're going to bring in lights. I mean, and uh, so you're going to start overloading outlets and you're also going to be to say, I only have a couple an outlet on one outlet on this wall and I'm going to use a power strip. And then you're like, but I need more connections and they may plug in another power strip and they call it daisy chaining. And that's not going to be acceptable. That's not acceptable by the fire code. So you want to make sure that you use the the devices in the way they're designed to be used. So if you have a power strip, don't sit there and put multiple plug adapters there. So just make sure you use it in the way it's intended. And if you're cooking, if you're in an apartment or if you're in a dorm that has a, a kitchen attached to it, and don't remove the batteries from the smoke detector because you may forget to put those back in. And so while you're sleeping, I mean, there may be an incident there and you're not gonna be, it's not gonna wake you because you remove the battery. And like I said earlier, candles, whether it's an apartment or in a dorm, it's you, if you're going to if you're in an apartment and you're going to use a candle, you need to be aware and just be safe with the candle. And if it gets down toward the end, you need to make sure that you blow it out before you you for the night's over with or you leave the room or you leave the house and and smoking. You just don't want to make sure if you're if you smoke, you should smoke outside. I mean, you have the problem with folks smoke it inside they'll drop a cigarette and then they'll catch fire or they don't they think they extinguish their cigarette or cigar if they, you may and it may not extinguish completely and it could cause a fire definitely you can uh leave it on an ashtray or something and it'll it burns so much that it loses its balance and then it falls over onto the floor yes you might not be in the room so um, and you mentioned the cooking in the dorms, but uh, if you can avoid it or, or use the group kitchen, that's probably the best way to go. Uh, for students that are living off campus uh, in apartments or a rental home, what do they need to remember about fire safety? One of the things that they're living off campus, I mean, uh, you should have a fire extinguisher available. Have one ready in, in, in your apartment so that if something happens, you have a fire extinguisher, you should read the directions and know how to use it in case of emergency. Because when that time comes, it's going to be, there's going to be a lot more stress on you and you may not be able to look at the directions. So if you learn beforehand how it needs to be uh, used, you'll be in a better position to use it correctly. And so one of the other things is that hot plates, I mean, they're, they're not going to be allowed on campus. So if you're living in a dorm, the, the school's not going to allow you to use a hot plate because you don't really have control and they can, something can fall on top of the hot plate and the hot plate still be hot and ignite that uh, maybe paper or blanket or something or pillow that's fall on top of it. And so then cause a fire. And so uh, you'll see a lot of just the, I mean, everyone's going to start making coffee before they go to class. So you'll see the pod makers and then you just want to make sure that they function properly. You maintain them. So don't just sit there and say, well, it's good. It'll be cleaned. And you want to make sure that they're properly maintained and cleaned when you're not, once you're done using them. So it all, it all comes down to like, you're having to take care of yourself now. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's totally, it's all in the student now. I mean, parents, we try to give them advice and we try to make sure that, we give them the best advice possible to live off campus, live on their own. And it's now it's up to the, it's their responsibility to maintain that, uh, their own safety. Yeah. Um, speaking of the safety, um, finally, uh, social activities on and off campus are also a, a big part of college life. So what do uh, they need to be aware of when they're in a crowded situation? So when you're in a crowd situation, I mean, uh, as we just stated a little while ago, you're going to be responsible for yourself, but you, you need to focus on if you go into an off-campus event or just a camp, an event on campus, where are your nearest exits? Uh, sometimes, uh, generally, 50% of the people will go out the same door they came in. So they don't look for alternative exits available. So you may have exits on the side of the building or in the back wall that are never used. And so to, to escape and evacuate the building safely, you can use one of those other exits. And it's a lot easier for you. And you're not in a crowd of people trying to push through a doorway where there's other doors available. And it will allow you to get out safely. So, uh, and if you, if, even if you sense that there is some problems going on, I mean, you need to distance yourself from those issues because, I mean, as we, it's not just fire, but there's a lot of things going on. Now there's active shooters and those kinds of things. You just need to be aware of surroundings and what's going on. Right. And that's, again, that's going back to that thing about getting past the mental block about this must not be what I think it is, or this alarm can't be a fire. 
It's yeah. go ahead and take those seconds to get out. Correct. Well, I think that's all we have. Uh, anything else you'd want students to know? I mean, I think I congratulations on your new adventure and I, I wish you success and uh, please be safe. Uh, this is some of the best times of your life and you want to enjoy these and you want to have good memories. So uh, once you finish college and you can always reflect on the, the great times you had and being safe is part of that, just understanding and you're able to relive those great experiences that you had. So uh, once again, congratulations and thank you very much. Well, thank you, Chief. Um, be sure to share all these fire safety tips with your student. And if you've got a student that's living away from home, be sure to review your insurance coverage for them. Uh, talk to your agent about auto insurance in the new town, renter's insurance, if that's something they need. And also check with your health plan about urgent care in the new location. You can find more tips on our website. It's tdi.texas.gov. And if you've got a specific insurance question, you can always call our helpline at 800-252-3439. So for Orlando Hernandez, I'm Ben Gonzalez. This is TDI. Mm -hmm.